arm, and for some reason there was an attraction. There was a certain attraction, and and uh, <laughs> it's all good now. No, we're good. Can you hear Is that me? When we went cow, cow tipping. That's when we went cow tipping. Exactly right, Tim. Hey, you have a God. I printed. Let me see now, Tim. When you sent me that text yesterday, uh, by the way, yeah, I thanks for getting back to me. By the way, <laughs> man, you know what? You sent. Then you sent something this morning at four twenty. I'm like, that guy's been out all night. He's he's <laughs> going <laughs> right now. No, you know what happened was I was so fired up to be on this program. I woke up at four o'clock to, to use the little boys room. Yeah. And when I crawled back into bed, I started thinking about all the things that we were going to talk about. I couldn't fall back to sleep. So I, I ended up texting. <laughs> I will kind of had something here, but whatever I had, you know, I usually do it with a, oh, what a shame it's in my car. So we're good. We're going to get a battle through this thing. Hey, now I don't have much light on me, Rob. Should I get oh, to, he's looking, oh, here we go. Let's turn this right here. And this then how's this that is looking? better here. Yeah, this is good. Does it look good? Can yeah. you see your face there? Yeah. I think so. I'm a little yeah. dark, but uh got a little headroom there. So let's keep that. Yeah, we're I good can right probably here. pump this up a little bit more. All right, you, you can go. See. So Timmy, the uh the way this thing works is we have a um we're with we're what we'll do is we'll we'll just start going and then what Rob does, he's a brilliant engineer. He goes and edits this thing out to where uh <laughs> To, to where uh, I do all the talking and you're not even existing. So it's great. I edit everybody out. So it's all about me. Make sense? Absolutely. Hey, now we're with uh, the, the podcast is called Swing Hard in case right. you hit it. And we came up with that thinking the analogous of life in general, man, swinging hard. And, and the guests I've had in the past, the Rex Ryans, the Tannenbaums, the, the Ed Croson's a couple of weeks ago, or last week, I should say, all the way from major stars to coaches, to people. And, and then the most important ones are the guys that have made, I've had relationships with in the past that have been a mentor to me that have affected me. And you're one of those guys, man, Timmy, you've always been one of those guys. And, and I look back, I've done a, I've done a little bit of a, uh, uh, what do you call it? A little, I've written back and all the guys in my life that have, uh, you know, that have made me enjoy this, this opportunity. And so um, with you now, we're with Tim Lavin, Tim, there's a book out and Tim, Tell us a little bit about yourself, about your history of playing. I know there's a book out that you put together back in, is it 2013 or even before that? 2002? Yeah. When was 2013. it? 2013. Right on. First of all, thanks for having me, Denny. It's a pleasure to be with you. Absolutely. Um, I was just, I was just uh, looking back. Uh, we met in 1995. So it's been 20, what, 27 some odd years yeah, that's um, right. That's right. Of, of our relationship. So that's awesome. So it's great to be with you. Let me just say this. Now, back in 95, you were a big man on campus out there at Chaminade High School. And then you went on to USC, uh, started, a, you, you have a beautiful family today, beautiful daughter. Uh, and, but getting to know you back then, how big were you in high school, Timmy? How big was your, was your height and weight in high school at Chaminade? You played football, uh, I know that. Yeah, I was 6'1", um, maybe between 190, 195, playing and then, linebacker and tailback. At Chaminade. And who was your head coach back then? Rich Lawson. The great Richie Lawson. And I think Croson was on that staff as well, wasn't he? Um, not when I was playing. I didn't. He came a couple few years later when I started coaching uh, with you uh, around 94, 95. That's exactly right, man. I, let me ask you, Timmy, and I want to get right into this because we can go, we could talk for hours, you and I. We've had a chance to to, to hang out and, 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 and talk about life and talk about general, but the book Walk On You, What? tell me about the book and how this started, because I love it. By the way, one of my all-time favorite books, it deals with more people. There it is, Walk On You. It'd be great one day to get a copy, Tim. I know I've been, I've been asking you to mail me one, but maybe one day you will. It'll happen, okay? You, you don't have a copy? No, I've had to go borrow it from somebody else to get a copy, and I know we're going to go back 28 years if that's just bullshit, <laughs> but go, go ahead, Tim. Let's talk about... <laughs> Yeah. Me, what, what is Walk On You? What's it about? Give me a little history of this thing. So I, um, you know, I walked through, I walked on it at USC and ultimately earned a scholarship. And, and the experiences that I had as a walk on for the, my first two years were drastically different than the next two years of wow. having a scholarship. And I constantly thought over the next two decades, you know, what walk-ons go through at the division one level. And I always wanted to write about it and, and, and express to people what it's like to be a walk-on at the division one level. 
and the differences in how they're treated. And uh, ultimately, one day I just sat down and started writing and I couldn't stop. And it was so uh, therapeutic yeah. that, you know, when I start writing, you know, it, it, it triggers a memory of some of another story and another story and another story. And I, I just I, it was like going to a therapist, it, but I was talking to a computer and I just typed away. And pretty soon I, I, I had a book and, and I wanted to get it out there and. And the great thing about the, the, the success of the book is, is you know, they, they tell you when you write your first book, don't expect more than 100 book sales. And most of it is family and friends. Right. I right. printed 2,000 books and I put it digitally online. And I've had more than 3,000 downloads uh, online from Amazon. Um, and, and people, you know, just going on my, my website, walkonyou.com and ordering the book there. And I sign every single book that goes out. And yeah, the book is seven years old now, but, um, but I was able to get on television and do local uh, TV interviews in the Los Angeles market. And then I went on national radio mm -hmm. and explained, you know, what's going on. And, and so many of these radio stations have syndicated stations that they syndicate out to like 300 stations around the country right. so plenty of people were hearing my message yeah. and ultimately i was able to get a couple huge huge rules uh, overturned and yeah. changed within the ncaa with regard to training table and insurance that walk-ons were were not allowed to be part of for those of us and again i appreciate i appreciate you saying that i guess I guess when you know someone for 28 years like we have, it's very difficult to get a book uh, to, uh, I, I, or any type of. So thanks, Tim. I'm still waiting for that damn thing. More, I just got a bigger resentment right now that I can't get a freaking book. All right. Uh, but I'll get it. I'll get it eventually. Um, let me ask you, give us a definition of a walk on. I think, uh, by the way, Rob, uh, it's a good question. We got engineer Rob here, producer Rob. But were you a walk on at, at, at your place? No, I was recruited. I, I was recruited. But we had half of our team walked on. They walked on. And they were some of my best friends. And it didn't, once we crossed the line, once we got on the field, it didn't matter if we were on scholarship or if we were walk on. We now, were ball players. Now, in baseball, you get 11.7 in Division One. Yeah. You get 11.7. You have a roster of about 30 guys. Let's go back. Fuck, shoot. I could do, we could have bleep that out. I, I can, <laughs> I enjoy this, Timmy. Thanks. Tim Lavin, by the way, author of Walk On You uh, and, and the owner of Mad Dog Promotions. Is that correct? Mad Dog Promos. Okay, and that's because your nickname was Mad Dog at SC? At, at USC, correct. Okay, because I always called you Babe. That was it, Babe, Babe. <laughs> I, that was it. <laughs> that was pre-Mad Dog day. That was pre-Mad Dog, pre-Mad Dog. Um, what is a walk-on today? So, yeah. So, let me ask, is there a difference between a walk-on back in 2000 and a walk-on today? Um, well, how they're treated, yes. Um, but the oh. definition is still pretty much the same. There's basically two different types of walk-ons. You have a walk-on of a kid who wants to play division one football. The coaches don't know who he is. He just knocks on the coach's door one day and says, hey, I'd like to try out. Mm. He comes in unannounced. The coaches don't know anything about him. They don't have film on him, nothing. And if they have room and they need more guys, they need more bodies for that practice squad, uh, they might, you know, allow him to be on the team. And that's an unrecruited walk-on. The second type of walk-on is what I was, and that is a recruited walk-on who the coaches have seen your film. They want you to come join their team. They don't have any more scholarships left because you have 85 scholarships at the Division One level, um, but they can carry 105, 110 115 guy total guys so you yeah. can have 20 30 walk-ons mm -hmm. and um in my case coming out of Chaminade you know I was contacted by USC and they they invited me for a recruiting trip I went there and they're like here's the deal we don't have any more scholarships left but we absolutely believe you can come here and play and earn a scholarship and did you believe I, so, it Timmy is that now let me oh, say yeah it. oh yeah. sure yeah, yeah. Oh, I believed it with all my heart, a thousand percent. In fact, I was so ticked off I didn't get a scholarship. I wanted to go prove everybody wrong and myself right. God, I get that. When they read, when they on on the walk on stuff, and I was a college coach for years, and and, uh, and I remember that same term. Some guys, it's hard to tell a kid 
a kid, because you're, uh, were there other opportunities for you to go play besides USC? Yes. Yeah. And I had some, I had several offers at division two and division three schools um, at numerous schools. I had more than 30 offers to be a recruited walk on at schools around the country. And I figured if I was going to walk, walk on, I might as well do it close to home. So, yeah. you know, at a, at a small division one college like <laughs> USC. Yeah. Right. Right. I, I figured if I was going to go big, go as big as you can go. Yeah. Hey, man. And I've known you for doing that, man. Again, Tim Lavin, a friend of mine and also author of Walk On You, a uh, book, book that was published eight years ago, or however, however, however many years ago, uh, nine years ago, I should say. And now to listen to you, when you, what do you tell a kid today, though? I don't want to get to that yet. When you got, when you walked on, what was the difference of going in there? Did they actually, they, do they give the walk-ons yellow shirts and they give the uh, recruited guys red shirts? Is there, is there a separation that they know who the walk-ons and who aren't? Um, you don't know. They, you don't get different colored jerseys or anything. Um, being a recruited walk-on means that you can come in in the beginning of August when the whole team reports and we can start practice at the beginning of August. And then they allow more walk-ons to join the team when school starts in September. So at the beginning of August, unless you tell someone, hey, I'm a walk-on, most of the team doesn't know, you know, who's on scholarship and who's a walk-on. Right. On. So I just kept my mouth shut and just put my helmet on and said, let's go bang heads. Yes. So yes. You know, that's, that was my mentality. In fact, I, I was, it, it's almost a, stig, a stigma of having that label walk on, you know, like the scarlet letter W O on your chest. And I was like, I don't want anybody to know I'm a walk on. I just want to put my helmet on and go prove myself. How, how was the, how was it going in there? You played in 19, uh, what year were you at SC? What year? 88 to 91. Right on. I saw a a picture of you recently on Facebook of some of those guys that you played with. I I think it was a golf tournament or something like that. Some of those NFL players you played with, who were some of those NFL guys you played with? Uh, Most notably junior Seau. Oh, he wasn't bad. You know what? I thought he was slow afoot. I thought he had weak. Really? Junior <laughs> stay out. Wow. So um, wh- when I do mail you my book, I do a whole chapter on fighting with Junior Seau in practice every single day for two years. Um, wow. Wow. And, and, wow. and that and, and that's kind of actually truly uh, what propelled me to get a scholarship because I went up to the head coach. I'm like, if I can take Junior Seau on and yeah. the, U- the number one defense in the country, yeah. You know, don't tell me I'm going to be a practice player for five years. I'm yes. not going to transfer and go to UCLA and play against you. And, Whoa, no, 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 no. We'll put you on scholarship. But um, Rodney Pete, Curtis Conway, oh, yeah. uh, Matt Willig, yeah. uh, Pat Harlow. Wow. Matt Willig is uh, the star of uh, that TV show, Young Rock. Yes, uh, yes. With Dwayne yes. Johnson, right? Yes. And, and, and Matt plays Andre the Giant on it. Yes, so yes. He's, he's become a... a big star well it, well yeah but when you went in there with these guys in when you walked in was there a, is there a physicality difference did you walk in and it gets into our podcast here man you just went in there and said hey i'm tim lavin let's go bang heads let's go bang heads was there any fear any type of like am i doing the right thing because you could have went any place else you could have went and been, been the guy i'm sure at any college other colleges that recruited you but your desire was to walk in there knowing who these other guys, because you probably play with a lot of these guys in high school or had already read about them uh, when they're playing at SC and UCLA. Now you're going to go in there and go nose to nose with them. Was there any false? Did your parents or dad say, hey, Tim, are we doing the right thing here? In fact, my parents were the only ones, at, along with my brothers, Terry and Jay, who were 100% behind me. Like that was all the support. The negative came from everybody else. Yeah. Tim, you're living a pipe dream. You're never going to play at USC. You know, forget about playing on Saturday. You're not even going to make the team. And that just obviously fueled my fire. But going back to the physicality, you know, when I walked on, I looked at the other fullbacks because I was a tailback uh, at Chaminade yes. at 190. And as soon as on day one, I walk on at USC and the running back coach goes, uh, you're now a fullback. And I'm like, <laughs> is that because of my blazing speed? You know? <laughs> so, um, so I look at the other fullbacks, 220, 230, wow. 245. And I'm like, 
I need to live in the weight room. <laughs> wow. So I, I did. I got up every morning at 6 a.m. I was the first guy there. I met uh, the, the, weight, the weight room coaches opening up the weight room. And I just said, hey, whatever our workout program is for the day, give me extra. Give me more. And wow. I just worked out before school, I took a shower, went to my eight o'clock classes. Uh, one of the few guys that went to classes. And, uh, <laughs> yeah. and uh, yeah. you know, then I'd come back and watch film at one o'clock in the afternoon, get dressed, go out and practice from three to five. Um, now, were your practices, was a walk-on, by the way, I'm going to use a word I use at every podcast. You had this intrinsic motivation. Ding, ding, ding. Every time I've used it. I, it and I should change a podcast called for that. <laughs> You were getting up and inside you had this intrinsic motivation to say, man, I'm going to go out there no matter what. Think I'm Tim Lavin and I'm going to let them know who I am. And were there a difference? So when practices started, is it a difference? Uh, how tough were the practices? How, how difficult? Is there a difference between a walk-on practice? Were you just a, a hitting dummy for lack of better terms or, or a bag? <laughs> Excuse me, I see you laughing out there. This will be on YouTube, so I don't want to think I ever call Tim Lavin a dummy. Not even today, because I've seen you walk. What are you right now? About You're probably about, what, 5'11", 210? You could just beat the shit out of anybody right now. I, know I wish I was 210. I'm trying to get down to 210. <laughs> um, but when you went out there with these, um, was, the, was there competition? Were you, like I said, were you just a hitting dummy, or did you go out there and say, let's go? Yeah, no. Um practices were really tough on Tuesdays and Wednesdays. Those were our full practice, full, full, full on, you know, scrimmage. Yeah. Um, and uh, yeah, you know, we, we uh, being a walk on as well as a lot of the scholarship guys, because the, the young guys are all part of the scout team. Right. And yes. we need to, we need to practice against the first team and second team defense. And then we, at the other end of the field, you've got, the defensive scout team practicing against our first and second gotcha. team. And so, um, you know, I, uh, I, I was basically the starting fullback uh, as, as our scout team was concerned. And so you, and know, so you had, had to scout my kickout you, blocks on junior sale. And then the fight was on. <laughs> I, you just took the words out of my mouth. Not only are you the scout team running back, you also have the scout team offensive line as well in front of you. Right. Right. Okay. Right. Just, right. And, and in 1988 and 89, we were the number one, number two defense in the country. Oh, wow. So, you know, <laughs> if you didn't strap it on, you were going to get murdered. No, and I so I, I got into fights every single day because nobody, nobody likes to get manhandled or beat uh, at, by a scouting guy, let alone a walk-on. Right. So if I got a good block on Junior Seau, Boom, boom. I mean, the fight was on. Thank God I had my helmet on and it never popped Man. off. <laughs> wow. So he didn't like, but you guys, it, it, and this is the walk-ons. I've heard this at Alabama. I've heard this. The best teams in the country have the best scout defenses and the scout team offenses, it seems, because those guys make those guys better. However, right. it's hard to take a compliment saying, yeah, I had a good day. I, I made those guys better out there. I mean, you wanted to get to play in time as much as anybody else, correct? Right. Yes. Yeah. No, it was, it was, uh, even though uh, Junior and I got into fights every day on the field, he was one of the greatest guys yeah. that I've ever known because yeah. in the locker room afterwards, he would come up to me and, you know, yeah. give me a high five and say, great job today, Mad Dog. You know, you, you, it was awesome. Yeah. And the coaches, the coaches would walk through the, the locker room as guys are getting dressed and getting ready to 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 jump in the shower and stuff and they'd go around and shake hands of everybody who they thought you know really did an outstanding job in practice and i always had several coaches come up and shake my hand so that was pretty cool so some advice what, what are some of the advice you would give today if a guy's getting recruited today and i'm sure you talk to and counsel some younger players and so forth in today's world it's changed a little bit uh than it has but what are we telling these uh what are we telling a walk-on or a non-walk-on or a player? They all get the same shot, right? Just some guys have longer leashes. If you're a recruited guy, you dealt with money in there. But if you're a dude, I'm trying to think, I try to look up some, some uh, successful walk-ons. Now, Tim Lavin is a successful walk-on. What's, what's that walk-on? It's like that free agent to go plays for a team and, and just does well. But there are guys that with that same mentality you have, and next thing you know, you earned that scholarship. You had to earn that scholarship, correct? 
Correct. Yeah. yeah. And what was that feeling like when coach brings you in and says, <laughs> did you say it's about time or did you just say, <laughs> thank you? Um, I get into a uh, great detail about that in my book and I'm not going to go into great detail about it now. Is that a teaser? You know what? That's, Jimmy, a, that's my teaser. Jesus. If you order a book from coach Lavin, uh, Tim <laughs> Lavin, you will get it. Just, it takes 28 years so far. Okay. Eight, eight, well, it's, it's, it's taken 28 years to get your address. Jenny. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> well, if you knew me, I've had many addresses in the last 28 years. <laughs> um, I, I'm not going to, I'm not going to take uh, Tim steam, but you see more and more videos go viral now with videos of kids and players Right. getting a scholarship from uh, from their coach right. and then right. making a big deal out of it. They yeah. make, right. it, it make it a, a team effort. They'll bring the player in, they'll video it. They'll maybe have somebody special announce it and, and they'll announce to this guy, you've earned your scholarship. Yeah, so, I see so they're that. making a bigger deal out of it right now. Right. And I'll tell you how and why that happened. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, go ahead. Let's, let's go. Yes. My book comes out. ESPN College Game Day, this is the honest to God's truth. ESPN College Game Day has never done video clips on a walk-on getting a scholarship. Wow. My book comes out and ESPN College Game Day is coming to USC for the SC Notre Dame game. Mm -hmm. And it's Friday afternoon and they're doing rehearsals and whatnot on the USC campus. And I go there with my book in hand and Kirk Herbstreet's coming off the stage. I walk up to Kirk and I give him one of my books. And then I gave him another one. I said, give this to your producer, all my information. I was so stupid. You know, I have no idea what an NDA is. Right. I, I, give it, I give it to him. I said, give this to your producer. I think there are incredible walk-ons out there with a great story that you could do a short clip on, on this show. Wow. And that was in November. And in September, when college football started up again, boom, all kinds of clips of walk-ons are getting scholarships. Wow. Wow. That, is it a coincidence? Probably not. Yeah. Um, they, they call me to do the, to do the intros. No. No. But, not, no. <laughs> hey, I'd tell you though, and I know you, you, you mentioned this and looking online, did a little, little research on you, but. I got to get into it then that you just mentioned SC and Notre Dame. So I'll segue into how many, did you guys, how many times you guys beat Notre Dame in your four years there? Uh, a zero. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Okay. I'm a huge Notre Dame fan, but I'm a big Tim Lavin fan. But the part is, does that movie Rudy, if I could just get it out there, give me three minutes of this. I see you shaking your head. I know. I know. <laughs> hey, with you, did they all, did, did say out and the rest of the guys bring their jerseys in and put it on the coach's table and says, we're not playing unless coach Lavin. So Tim Lavin is on the field. Did that, is that true? <laughs> no, okay. that is complete Hollywood. It is. Um, look, Rudy is a great movie, and I cried at the end like everybody else when he gets carried off the field, right? Yes, it's sir. a cute Hollywood movie, but 95% of the stuff in that movie never happened in real life. Uh, <laughs> and you have, you've got guys like Joe Theismann, who was on that team, yes. going on national TV saying, that movie is the biggest bunch of bull. Look, <laughs> I have respect for Rudy because he was five foot six 150 pounds right. playing at notre dame yeah. and he went out and got his absolute brains beaten in right but he did not have an ounce of talent to play for your local high school freshman football team okay <laughs> he's yeah. not a jj watt he's not a clay matthews he's not mm -hmm. a Neus williams mm -hmm. he's not you know jordy nelson or colt brennan or you know darren woodson carl mecklenburg these guys walked on and wow. ended up going on and playing in the NFL because wow. they had talent. They got overlooked for whatever reason. They didn't get a scholarship except for JJ Watt. He did get a scholarship to central Michigan right out of high school. He went there and crushed people and said, I can go bigger than central Michigan. And he wow. turned around and walked on it at Wisconsin. And now, you know, three time defensive NFL player of the year. God dang um, it, man. So those are guys, I couldn't mention names. You, you have the names right there in your book, obviously. I, yeah, I they're, they're in my book. And, and I, you know, I, I'm after eight, nine years, I'm due to write another one because we've got plenty more guys who, um, 
you know, look at the the the, the quarterback for the Browns. Uh, why is his name escaping me? Um, he won the Heisman Trophy, two-time walk-on. Baker. Oh, Baker. Baker, Baker Mayfield. Baker Mayfield. Yeah. I don't know why that just escaped my mind, but yeah, you know, in my opinion, he's the best walk-on ever in the history uh, in the last fifty years. He wow. walks on at two different schools. He's the first freshman, true freshman walk-on to start an NCAA game. Wow. And he just lights it up for two years. He wants a scholarship. They won't give it to him. So he leaves. Um, I forgot what school he was at. He leaves and goes to Oklahoma, walks on a second time at Oklahoma, earns a starting spot, and leaves Oklahoma to bowl games and all kinds of stuff, and then earns a, uh, and then earns the Heisman Trophy, the biggest trophy in college football Wow! wins the Heisman trophy. And then is the number one draft pick in the NFL draft no, uh, no. a few years ago. I God, mean, it great. doesn't get any better than that. I do though. I remember watching and I, you got, that's, that's a great story, boy, but I know Rudy did have the good swim move. I saw the swim move on Rudy that nobody <laughs> recognized. Maybe Dan divide. That's why he had that last play in there. Take it from right. Him. Right. Right. Yeah. <laughs> I, I love the truth that you bring out to me. I love the truth. What well, is, um, What's the, I want to get into you a little bit. What's the, um, what do these young kids today do that have this, uh, with this portal? That's what I wanted to say. This portal that's out there, you know, the NCAA portal. Oh, crazy. Isn't it crazy? If you were at SC as a walk-on for two years, would you take an, would have taken advantage of that portal and got out of there? Or would you stuck out there for SC for those five years and going on? Yeah. That's a great question. And I don't know the answer to that. I would really have to see where I was after that second year. Yeah. Um, my story was uh, after my second year, I went up to our head coach, uh, who was who Larry was Smith, Larry Smith. Yeah. And uh, I said, Hey, you know, I, I'm not a practice player for five years. Okay. I deserve to play on Saturday and improve it in practice every day the last two years. Yeah. So unless you have plans for me, I'm going to go ahead and transfer. And he paid me one of the best compliments I've ever gotten because he coached for a long time. He said, Tim, you're one of the best walk-ons I've ever coached in my career. Wow. Go through spring ball. And if after spring ball, I feel that you're going to play on Saturdays, I'm going to give you a full scholarship. Mm. Wow. If I don't think you're going to play very much, I'll help you find another school. Wow. There you go. And we shook hands on it. I went through spring ball. And in our last spring game in the LA Coliseum in front of about 25, 30,000 people, um, I ended up playing quite a bit because we had a couple running backs who were hurt. In fact, I even played a little bit of tailback because I knew that I had a little bit of history playing tailback in high school. Anyway, speed. <laughs> yeah. Um, four, seven, five. Guys? Exactly right. Exactly. I, I mean, I, yeah. So um, Ricky Irvins, who four months earlier was Rose Bowl MVP yeah. and our victory over Michigan and Bo Beckler's last game as a head coach, we win the Rose Bowl 17 to 10. Four months later, we're going through spring ball. Ricky's now a senior. He had eight carries for nine yards in that mm. final spring game. I had eight carries for 64 yards and a touchdown. Nice. Nice. So, nice. so I go in the locker room and uh, the whole team is getting undressed and, and they see me come in and I got 30, 40 guys, you know, just shouting and barking like a dog, mad dog, mad dogs in the house. Woof, woof, woof. You know, the whole nine yards. I love it. It, it was, you know, Hey, I got accepted by my peers. Right. Yes. And then that's when Larry Smith walked up to me and said, great day today. I'm putting you on scholarship. Wow. wow. Good story. Man. That's a good story. God, that, Hey man, tell me about that again. This isn't, I'm just now I just went off track. How about that? People don't recognize understand the camaraderie in a locker room. Of, uh, I mean, is that what you and I remember? Why do I remember they say, how was that year? It's a great year. I've won. I've won. I've, I've, we went 55 and 10 one year, and I've gone three and 37. And I'll tell you what, the three and 37 was a little bit more enjoyable because of the camaraderie amongst the players in there. And you're feeling that right now. I felt it come through the Zoom. The, the thought of a walk-on earning a scholarship and granting one and having a player's pump you up and, and say, right now, it's got to feel good, I assume. Oh, uh, incredible. And, you, you know, you brought up 
relationships when you talked about me being on the show for you uh, with you and 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 you know the relationships in sports is something you you, you never let go of you know mm. I, I, I don't look back at my classmates in, in science class and go, God, I can't wait to see Susie again, you know? <laughs> but, but, but the guys that you were in that locker room with, those relationships last a lifetime. Yeah. And, you know, you don't, you don't forget um, your buddies, and the, the blood, sweat, and tears that you guys go out in that practice field, you know, for five days and then play on Saturday together, you know, maybe you're not best friends today. You don't talk to them all the time, but you brought up our, our golf tournament. We had our Trojan football alumni golf tournament a week and a half, two weeks ago. All these Trojans, all these former players show up and we haven't seen each other in years. We're taking pictures with each other and hitting golf balls all over the place because we yeah. play once a year in the, this hot tournament. Yeah. Um, but, but it's, you know, you're hugging guys that, that you know, you hugged 30 years ago you know, after a touchdown, you know, and right. it's just the, these relationships cultivate so much um, emotion and the development of, of, you know, your, your future vocation, your, your relationships with your family, uh, right. just in general life, because everybody knows somebody and just reaching out to a buddy who you play ball with. Hey, Tim, you're uh, uh, involved in, you know, promotional products. Hey, I know someone who needs promotional products at ABC company. Yeah, you know, yeah. you're constantly helping each other, uh, referencing and advising people. And it's just, it's just, it's just a relationship that, that just grows. You know, Tim, there's a, there's a, uh, if you're in the, the fraternity of coaching or playing at a high level like you did, doesn't matter where you are at that level, whether you start as a walk-on or whether you're a, an assistant coach or what, you're in the you're in the hunt, you're in that thing, you're in. And I can't describe it to those that, it's really hard to sit across from somebody that has never been a part of this. And they've been a part of that experience that you're talking about right now. Like what goes on? why that guy say that in the locker room? Well, he didn't really say, it, it just was said. It's not like there's we're not we're not having sit down, not having sit down coffee talks inside of a locker room right now, man. There's a lot of emotion that comes through a game. First of all, football games. I hear you guys, uh, and I hear those guys in the silence. I'm a baseball guy, obviously, and uh, we'll have. I enjoy football. I enjoy the work. The problem with football, you guys have to play once a week. If you get beat, you got to wait a whole frick another week to answer to that. In baseball, we can lose on a Friday and come back on Saturday. And so, and then the coach gets pissed off at you. You played bad on Saturday. You do films on Sunday. I don't know. Then he's going to rip your ass all week long until you play the next opponent, you know? And, and then right. you win that thing. It's like, where is the joy of playing division one college football? Where's the joy? Is it just that one win when the, when the, when the gun shoots or, or is it the whole experience? I got, I, I don't know. Yeah, no, I think it's the whole experience. Um, the, the, the day-to-day -day grind Monday through Friday um, and, and your preparation, you know, your, your heart rate goes up and up and up over the course of the week. Like you can't, it's like a little kid on Christmas morning. Yeah, you, you can't wait till Saturday. Right on. Right. You just can't wait till Saturday. And you're right. If you end up losing, you know, you start all over again. Yes. But it's that it's that up and down, constant, like getting fired up and having a great, even having a great practice on a Tuesday or Wednesday, mm -hmm. you know, made me feel like a million bucks. Yeah. Um, and, and, you know, then, then Saturday comes and, you know, your heart's pounding, everybody, you know, gets nervous before a game. Um, but you know, then you start walking down that Coliseum tunnel, Ugh. There's 90,000 people out there. And yeah. you're like, now your heart's really beating. Right. Uh, yeah, <laughs> and, yeah. you know, yeah, I, yeah. I'm looking for my mom and dad up in the, up in the stands and I'm like, I think they're up there somewhere, you know, oh, um, God. but see, you won't, you wouldn't have experienced that. You could have went to a nothing against another division two, II, division three. I think there's a place for everybody to play. I think we would have both agree on that. You could sure. walk on it. Oh, yeah. Go, go, uh, you can walk on anywhere. You can get a scholarship anywhere, but what you do, you go, you play to see, you get to experience that 90,000 people 
that right. you wouldn't experience at Azusa Pacific, if you will. And they've had right. some, they got that NFL with that running back, Christian Okoya. He was at, yeah, uh, that's right. He went to Azusa. He was a dude. And so, but the experience that you, that, that you, that, uh, that you have on a Saturday, I got to imagine is, um, no one knows who's a walk-on and not a walk-on when you're walking through that tunnel through the Coliseum right there. Yeah, you've got 105 guys running get running onto the field at the same time and 95,000 people cheering. Yeah. They have no idea, uh, you know, scholarship. Walk- In fact, most people don't even, they just see the football team coming out. They don't yes. know. Some of those guys are walk-ons. They, they, they don't know. Yes. They're on their third beer already, you know. Yeah, they're, yeah, they're, yeah. They're, they're, they're ready to go and watch some, some great football. You're talking about me third. I was about on my seventh beer before uh, <laughs> I couldn't get through the, uh, the tailgating, man. That was my problem. I heard there were some great games out there. I just couldn't get through the tunnel to get on the, uh, into the stadium right there. Yeah. I never, yeah, but that, that thrill, that thrill, that, that chilling feeling of running through the Coliseum tunnel. Uh, that was my, you know, because coming from Chaminade, we had like 3000 people in the stands, right? Max, Max. Right. Right. And, and we went, my, my senior year in high school, we went to the championship game and I think we had 7,000 people. Yes. So then, you know, a season later, I'm walking on at USC and I'm walking through the Coliseum Tunnel and I come out and, you know, not everyone's in their seat yet, but it, it's a pretty full stadium. Yeah. Um, and, you know, Rodney Pete's our quarterback and we're, you know, they're calling us national champs already for, for that, for that season. Wow. I mean, it, it's just chilling. A couple of years later, when when I was when I did start to travel, uh, my second thrilling moment was um, I am Irish and Catholic, so I I okay. did like Notre Dame growing up. Yes, and um, so even though I went to SC, you know, I as a little kid I was a Notre Dame fan, right. and so coming through the tunnel uh-huh. at Notre Dame Stadium, and you have touchdown Jesus yeah. looking up at that building, there's nothing like it. There's nothing like it. There, there's not, there's nothing like the way you describe it, man. We had, we had Mark Sanchez on here, quarterback at USC uh, yeah. a while back. And, and uh, you know, he was talking saying the same thing, but he wasn't talking about who's walk-ons, who's not a walk. And I want, I want you to talk, I want, we're getting close to this thing. I know, but talk about that kid right now. Talk about that Tim Levin right now. Who's at Chaminade or who's at Harvard or Westlake. Or, man, give this kid some advice right now or the parents as well for this kid. That's that, man, doesn't know where, walk on, talk mm. to me a little bit, talk to me as that kid. What do you got with that? How do you, how do you help that? Well, I don't want a kid to get discouraged, you know, just because you don't get a scholarship coming out of high school, you know, don't throw in the towel. Sports is way too important. Don't throw in that towel. You have an opportunity at D1, D2, D3, NAIA. Heck, you could go to a junior college and sharpen your skills. I mean, look at, look at uh, Aaron Rodgers. One of yeah. the best quarterbacks in the NFL for the Packers. He didn't get a scholarship out of high school, so he went to a junior college, right? right? And Steve uh-huh. Mariucci sees him, brings him to Cal Berkeley, and now he's one of the best quarterbacks in the NFL. So don't be afraid to take – look, everybody has that dream of being a Division One player. And if you don't get that scholarship, yeah, sure, you can walk on. But just remember the the, the difference is – even if you have that crazy, intense, burning desire that I did and I wanted to prove everybody wrong, mm-hmm. the, the problem is a college coach spends two, three, four years recruiting this kid out of high school. And the athletic department gave that coach a ton of money to travel all over the country. And he finally lands his prospect and he gives that kid a scholarship. And then Wally Walkon shows up one day and he starts playing better than the, the coach who he recruited. So who do you think the coach is going to give those opportunities to, right? Yes. yes the yes. kid that he invested money in. And so your opportunities as a walk-on are few and far between. And even if you did do better than him, the coach probably is going to play the other guy, the scholarship guy on Saturday. Because if he plays the walk-on, people are going to go, why didn't you recruit him? Right. You know, you recruited right. this guy. Right. So the coach is kind of stuck between a rock and a hard place. Uh, and so that that's the challenge of being a walk-on. Yeah. And that's why I, I would say to a high school kid, you know, look, yeah, it's great to walk through the tunnel and all that stuff and the crowd noise. 
you know, but there's so many opportunities. And, and if you don't go the JC route, it's okay to take a step backwards because you still got three, three more years after a JC stint to yeah. try and make something happen. Man, and, I was, a, I tell you, yeah. Timmy, I was a head coach. I was a head coach at the, at the JC level at Glendale College. I was a head coach at Occidental College, which is Division Three. Uh, I was an assistant at a Division Two program. And then I was an assistant at Division I program at Santa Barbara. I was a high school coach. The athletes are all there. As long as you continue to play, you have an opportunity. As soon as a young man says, you know what? Screw it. I'm not doing this. You know what? They don't like me. You got to have thick skin. You got to have a crush that ego for a little bit and just play. Let the coaches coach let, and, as, and let the players play. I always tell the players today, man, there's a lot of noise out there. This kid's better than that. I bet guys you play with in high school, you know those names. Uh, the, there's guys that you hear names and you played against them. And you go, how's that guy getting a scholarship? Or how's that Absolutely. guy? And, Absolutely. and then we tend to take that as a negative and go, so we'll screw this sport. Forget it. I'm just not going to play anymore. I stopped my career too early playing because other guys that were moving on. That's a true story. I've never even meant admitted that. I stopped at a year er, uh, early because other guys were moving on and I thought, screw it. I'm not, it, this isn't fair. The truth mm -hmm. is, man, it doesn't have to be fair. Just show up and keep going. You agree on right. that? Absolutely. My ego was so bruised and, yeah. you know, I come out of high school after my senior year and I was number two in rushing and scoring in right. Southern California. Right. Number two in Southern California, the number one guy was a kid by the name of Russell White at Crespi, whose yes. uncle is Charles White, who won the Heisman Trophy at USC. Okay. I saw Russell play at Crespi. He, he took one back at Santa Barbara High School. I had to go see Russell White. He was different, man. He was awfully good. I agree. And you're number two. That's amazing. I'm number two. But in the LA Times and the uh, the LA Times and the Daily News, right? They did their rankings of of running backs. Yeah. And I'm number two, but the season's over, and I'm seeing in the paper that guys three through yeah. ten are all getting scholarships. Right. And I'm like, wait a minute, I did better than all these guys. This yeah. is bull. And that was where my ego just was so bruised, and I was so yeah. determined that I was, you know, people are like Tim, you'll never play at USC. Man, that was just like burning a match on my heart. Yeah. Really? Okay, yeah. watch this. Exactly. And, right. you know, that's the mentality you got to have is if you're going to walk on, you've got to have thick skin and you're you're going to go through some pretty poor decisions uh, that coaches make and not giving you opportunities. Yeah. Um, but some coaches are fantastic at giving guys opportunities. When I wrote my book, Tom Osborne of Nebraska, I called him, I call, I, I reached out to him because I knew he had a great walk-on program at Nebraska. And uh, he emailed me back. I got an email from Tom Osborne. I'm wow. like, this is crazy. And, and I, I, I saw it in my book today. I forgot that he wrote me back. He said, I'll be happy to talk to you. So I call uh, his office and his secretary. I didn't know this. At the time, they were leaving the Big 12. And going into the Big Ten, they were making this huge conference move, and it hadn't been announced yet on ESPN. Like, no one knew this was happening. And he's right in the middle of this. this is I think the news was announced, like, the next day or two days later. So I call his secretary and says, look, he's really busy. You're going to get three, five minutes max. I'm like, no problem. I'm just going to pepper him with questions and hope for the best. Yes. 38 minutes later, we're getting yeah. off the phone. Yeah. You know, because he was passionate about his walk-on program. Yeah. And what he said is, he did is, hey, these walk-ons deserve an opportunity just like everybody else. Right. And he said, I just want to dangle a carrot in front of them. And if they come out of spring ball and they're like number one, number two on the death chart, they're getting a scholarship, period, end of story. That's, so you know? great. That's a great story. Hey, we're just about to close up. I want to ask you one more question, if you don't mind. Would you, first of all, can we do this again, ma'am? Can we do this sure. again? Okay. Cause I, I didn't get a chance to, to tell you how handsome you are. And I have a lot. Ah, of, okay. I did get my hair cut for you on Tuesday. So. <laughs> and so did and I. Apparently, hasn't apparently grown back. you did too. <laughs> <laughs> hey, serious question. If you, if you had to do it all over again, honest to God, Timmy, if you had to do, Timmy, Jesus, coach, Tim Lavin, friend, uh, 
mentor of mine. I love what you've done with your life. I love what you've done. And I love the research and the, and the history you're bringing back. This is very important to what we do here, to what I want these young kids to know about. But if you had to do it over again, would you do it the same way? That's an intense question. Um, <laughs> and the reason it's intense is because, you know, I was told I would never play at USC, right? And, and I ended up doing that. I was told I would never get a scholarship and I ended up do, doing that. I was told I was no way would I ever get a tryout in the NFL and I got a tryout with the Raiders and the 49ers. Yeah. Um, I didn't make the team. I didn't play in the NFL. I didn't even have a cup of coffee in the NFL. You know, you know that, that's one of the things that they say in our little world. Yes. You know, if yes. you play for a really short time, you had a cup of coffee. I, I didn't even... I walked into Starbucks. I got in line like everybody else. And they said, we're out of coffee. Get out. <laughs> I'm like, wait it. a minute. I haven't even placed my order yet. Right. Get out. Right. Can I have a napkin? No, get out. Yeah. Yeah. So that yeah. was the extent of my NFL tryout. But, um, but what, and then of course, later on, I joined the Trojan football alumni board and I met all these incredible guys. And those, again, all those relationships start coming back from guys that played years before me and years after me. Yeah. And so it's a family, it's a beautiful family. Um, so even though I didn't get as much playing time as I wanted to, I got on the field on Saturday quite a bit mm -hmm. and I got a small opportunity in the NFL. So yeah, would I do it all over again? Yeah, I, I, I'm proud to be a Trojan. I, I did love that, very good, man. Woo! Hey, Timmy, the, uh, um, again, I, I love you. I could say that you're a grown man and, a, and an athlete and a coach and a mentor. And I, I, I mean, I, I just love you like a brother, uh, I've known you a long time. And it, it is so good to get, get a chance to have you um, share the type of man you are. And you're a man first, you're a father, you're a, uh, you're, you're, you're a caring, loving dude. And, and so this book is big. Our followers are up to about, you know, 7,000 to, to a hundred thousand, but uh <laughs> That's uh, awesome, dude. But they're out there. Um, how do we get your book? How do they go about getting on your getting your book? Um, well, how do I go about getting your book? First of all, <laughs> you, you first you send me your address. Okay, but as long as you're not moving again for again. The 28 time in 28 years. <laughs> how do they um, get your book? Or what's it called? You 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 describe it for a second. We're almost done. Yeah. Yeah. No. Uh, this is the book. Yeah, it's a little dated, but the principles are still the same. Absolutely. And the stories. The stories are still the same. Yeah. Um, a couple of rules have changed, thankfully, because of the book, which is yeah. beautiful. So yeah. walk on you, W-A-L-K-O-N-U, the letter U for university. You can see my logo back here. Yeah. Walk on you com. You can order it there. Uh, and if you want digital copies, I, it's on Amazon still. Okay. And um, there's a couple other digital um, uh, companies out there that, that are carrying it. Sure. Um, yeah. okay. So that's how you can do it. And then. Um, if you need promotional products or staff uniforms, I'm at maddogpromos.com. Hey, do you guys do banners down there? We do. I need a banner. I'm, when we, when we get out this thing, I'm going to order it to you. I got, I'm going to Cooperstown in three weeks and I don't have a freaking banner that says, or says you walk down in a parade. Can you, can you have it done in a couple of weeks or is it, uh, sure. yeah, Danny, I can make anything happen, bro. I know, I, I, I know you can. <laughs> You just couldn't run the 40 and four, two. That was a problem. Okay. There's a, there's a lot out there. Um, I can in the 20 yard dash, you know, <laughs> but not the 40. No. Hey man. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank hey, you. Had a great time. I did too. Well, um, Tim Lavin, Rob, Tim Lavin, man. I told you what I said. Good stuff. Yeah. You got me inspired. Thanks, Rob. Too. Great meeting you. I yeah. want to, I want to walk on to Alabama, but I don't think that's going to happen, but I'm inspired. I'm inspired. Thanks. Awesome. Yeah. Good stuff. Let me get, okay, we're, we're done. Hey, yeah, Timmy, yeah. Real, so now we finished. Hey, man.